Okay, guys, good morning. Welcome back, Mr. Break. We're going to work on graphing quadratic function. Quadratic, guys, means the x squared part. Work machine. Means that part, okay? We're going to have y is equal to fx. Um, y is equal to x squared, or we're going to go with f of x. Is equal to x squared. Same idea. This is in the equation of a line. This is function notation. It's the same idea. Okay, characteristics of a quadratic function. Okay, quadratic functions are nonlinear and can be written in the form of f of x equal to ax squared plus bx plus c where a is not equal to zero, because if a is equal to zero, then this is it's gone, becomes linear. This form is called the standard form for, of a quadratic function. The shape of the graph of the quadratic function is known as a parabola. The parabolas are, are symmetric by the center line called the axis symmetry. The axis symmetry is the of the parabola at only one point, called the vertex. So again, kind of getting te technical with a lot of stuff. So you know the keywords here. Uh, this is standard form. You need to know this. You know what? It's on here for you. So copy this down. This is a what? Quadratic. The graph parabola. That's this blue part. Okay. The axis of symmetry. Okay. When this graph goes like this, this is considered opening up. See from here, it opens up, or you can have it open down. This is considered opening up. This is your vertex right here. In this situation, at my lowest point, and it's a symmetry, symmetric. So whatever happens on this side happens on this side. Well, what do you mean? From this axis of symmetry, whatever happens on this side happens exactly the same distance away on this side. Say it's two and a, I don't know. We'll go with it just to make it nice. Two and a quarter this way, two and a quarter that way. You got it? Off the axis of symmetry. Copy that down. Okay, to find the axis of symmetry, it's a negative uh, b over 2a. Negative b is going to be the x term right here, right? This is the a x squared. This is the x squared term. The b x term right here is really b over 2a. Now, a, b, they can be anything they want, okay? Don't freak out. Add this part real quick, too. So this graph right here is going to have, you can kind of think about it as well, you're going to have it as x squared. Positive, it's opening up, right? When it opens down, say I have this one opening down here, you're going to have a negative x squared. So if a is greater than what well, means positive, like I have a 2, a 3, a 4, it opens up. If uh, it opens upward. The lowest point is called the minimum. So when it opens up, this is the minimum. When a is less than 0, when a is a negative, like a negative, Three, it opens down. And the highest point is called the maximum. Okay, so why is it called maximum and minimum? Well, you always read the, the graphs, guys, from left to right. Okay, so I'd be coming down, coming down, coming down. That'd be the lowest point, and it goes back up. So that's the minimum. Here, I'd read the graph from left to right. And what do you mean, left to right? We're well, a realistic idea, or realistically, or kind of for real, this graph goes forever in that direction. And it goes forever in a dead bottom direction. So if I were reading this graph, I'd be coming from left to right, then I'd be going up, 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 up. The highest point, and then I'd be going back down, 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 down. Now, this right here is your axis of symmetry. Whatever happens on this side, happens on that side. So there's some key things I want to go on here. I want to go ahead, and go ahead and get that domain and range. Now, this one here, I don't know how you want to do this one. There's so many different ways of doing it. Uh, a lot of y'all were asking this last test. We took the benchmark. Uh, scores were okay. Had some 90s. No lies. Had several 90s. It had several 80s. And then all the way down to, I think the lowest was like a 40 something. Well, it depends how you want to get it. That 40 person, that person got a 40 something never does anything. So it's their fault. Uh, but the ones that did 90s, good job. But some of the 90s and the 80s wanted more points. They want more knowledge on the calculator. So let me just give you ideas. If I ever see something set up like this, if I ever see y is equal, 
I don't even care if I see S is equal. Once I see the setup right here, guess what I can do? I can graph that. I can graph it. Now, this is what I would graph. I would only have to type in this part right here, though. Okay? What do you mean I can grab? Get my calculator? Uh, I believe it's 3x squared plus 6x minus 4. Plus 6x minus 4. And there it is. You see that? Now, Pay attention to how I did this. You need to pay attention to this. Well, well, let me tell you what I see also. I see those y equals. So my calculator, this is right here, my y. And this is where it equals. Type in everything here. It has to be basically when you have this equation or this function where it's solved for y. You got it? Or solved for one of the variables. And that's it. And you only have two variables, x and y, is s, r, is t. A, B, I don't care, whatever. Two variables, you got it? So now, it wants us to get the domain and range, kind of. So this is like, how do I say it? There's a lot to analyze here in this thing. So let me go to the calculator, right? 3x squared plus 6x minus 4. So look at what I'm going to do here. 3x squared, 3x squared plus 6x minus 4. Graph it, there it is. You got it? Let me just double check. 3x squared plus 6x minus 4. Yeah, that sounds about right. Now, the book went out here and gave, them, gave you uh, like a table. I've shown this to you all. Y'all don't ever practice it because we never use a calculator, but here it goes. I would go to control. See? And it gives you a whole bunch of list of data. See that? These are my x values. When x is 1, y is 5. When x is 2, y is 20. Now you can scroll up and you can scroll down. Get any numbers you want for x and y. I'm going to control T to get rid of it. So I typed it in here. Because it's in the form of y equals, I can go to control T, which control gives me a table. To get rid of it, control T to get rid of it. To bring it back, control T. And there it is, okay? I'm not going to use this table. I really don't. Well, you can kind of scroll up and down. And if I'm at 1 here, I'm at 1 here, I'm at 5. And that's what it's showing me here. If I go to the right, I'm at 2. I'd be way off at 20. I want to find my lowest point over here, like the boy the book's doing. So I'm just going to scroll x value. See this? I'm going to scroll up because it's going to make 0. One, eight of one. Okay. So if you look at that, that right there is going to probably be my lowest point. Look how it's equally, you see that? In both directions. Negative four here, negative four here. Five here, right? Negative four, five. So I should have another five over here. There you do, right? Okay. I don't like that. In my head, I'm like, oh, that's too much stuff. I'm going to show you some other cool tricks. They want us to find the domain and range. So I'm going to find the lowest point of the graph. Knowing that this thing opens up, I'm going to find my minimum. I'm going to go control, analyze graph. I'm going to find my minimum. I'm going to go here to here. And there's my minimum. You see, this is my that point right there is my minimum for that graph. So look what I did there. I'm going to go to control, escape to get rid of it. Right? Control, escape to get rid of it. I'm going to go here to do the minimum. The reason I know it's the minimum, there's several things that give it away. This A right here is positive, so it opens up. I know it opens up. So if it opens up, then I know this is the minimum, my lowest point. Okay? So I'm going to come out here and go to my head, my brain that does the work right here at the calculator, and I'll find the minimum. Lower bound, so I have to, this is the point that's the lowest bound here. I'm going to go to the left of it. Then I'm going to go to the right of it. And there is my lowest point for that graph. So now, let's just think what this shows me here. Remember, this graph goes up forever in that direction. I guess I should put it in blue, right? This graph goes forever up in that direction and up forever in that direction. So now, they want the domain range. Okay, so domain are x values. Now, domain, 
If I go here, it goes forever in the negative direction, it goes forever in the positive direction. So you can go ahead and say either way, your domain for this one, your x values is going to be x is between a negative infinity. Man, I'm messing up so bad. I can say x is between negative infinity and positive infinity. I can say x is the, the domain of x or the domain. The set of x such that that uh, x is all real numbers. You know, there's a sky limit. How you want to say this? You can say all real numbers. Now let's go to the domain. I mean, that's the domain. Now let's go to the range. Now let's think about this range. That's my lowest point here. My y values are all of these above it. All of these above it. So you want to say, what number is that? Negative seven, right? Negative seven, right? We want y, and all the y values to be greater than or equal. That negative seven. What? How do you do that, sir? Okay. So let's think about what I'm going to show you here. Remember what I told you? Several things I told you to do. First thing is to put the y by itself. What's the upper bound? Positive infinity. What's the lower bound? Negative infinity. Uh, negative negative seven. I always told you to do this regardless. Cool. I don't even know what I was thinking of. Like this. Sorry, I was just trying to quick. So it's always like this. Always like that. Okay? Now, this part would never be in your ass choice. It just don't put that part. This is the part they're going to put. Now, you get to decide. Does it touch it? Does it go through that part? You're going to say yes. Okay, it goes through it. The graph doesn't go down and then skip over an 8 or 7 and then come back up. So it actually touches it right there. So there is my, uh, I guess, inequality. My range, okay. Now, several ways you can even like that, or you can switch it around, okay. Next one, let's try another one, or oh, let's go back and see what the book put. So, this is the way they came out here and put it they put x to be between all these numbers, negative infinity and positive infinity. You can see all real numbers. And they came out here and said, well, this is my what? Uh, y is my answer for the range such that y is greater than or equal to an 8 of them. Sky's limit. you got to understand what this says. And you're going to go to be able to read the, the test questions and get it down like that. Um, they mean the same thing if you, don't, if you don't put the range and you're talking about the range. As long as they say the range and you have this set up there, you can have it. Okay? You're going to have to read. They always find a new way of figuring out how to write it. You're going to make sure you're saying the y slash range goes with this. Domains goes with this. They can even say all real numbers or like this. So it's guys learn. It's going to be able to read it. Let's go over here now, ready? It says do the same thing for this one real quick. Do the same thing for this one. Take the domain and the range. Okay, now I don't know how you want to do this one. I'll just go to the calculator. I'm going to go straight to the calculator. I'm going to go turn on the calculator. That one's there. Don't mess with that one anymore. Now, let me go back over here. Since that one is in the form of y equals, I can graph this. So I can turn on the calculator and go with x squared plus 3. And there it is. Okay. Several things you can do. You know that it opens up, right? So that's positive right here. The x squared is positive, so it opens up. Uh, you can do control T, and there's your table. You can only do control T, guys, when it's y equals, okay? So I'm going to control T, get rid of it. I want to come out here, go to menu. I'm going to go to analyze graph. I'm going to go to the minimum, all right, from here to here. So the lowest point that it reaches is a 0, 3. So remember, I want to go to the x's. Remember, this line goes forever in the negative direction, positive direction. It goes forever up, it goes forever up here. So my x is my domain. We're going to say x is between, you know, 
uh, like this, negative infinity and positive infinity. You can also say, there's another way of writing like this, okay? Oh, these are not included, and these are included. Okay, next thing is my range. Okay, that you can also say it as your all real numbers. Okay, for all real numbers, I usually just do that. Okay, however you want to read it. Next thing is when I come down here, I find my range. Now look, range are my y values. So I would just go right here, right here like this. The highest thing, it goes up forever, forever, and ever positive, so that's infinity. The lowest it always comes down to is three. There's your answer right there. They won't include this part. If you say y is greater than or equal to a three, and there it is. I hope you understood that. Come on, come on. We'll go one more example, okay? Okay, so recall that the figures with axis symmetry, oh, I'm sorry, with symmetry are those in which each half of the figure matches exactly this, matches this other half. A parabola is symmetric about the axis of symmetry. Every point on the parabola to the left of the axis of symmetry has a corresponding point to the other half. So, see this point is what? Uh, we'll go one and a one ish this way. Then this point over here is one ish that way. I'll go up here. Let's say this one's uh, one and a half this way. Then this one's also one and a half this way. Okay. The function is increasing on one side of the axis of symmetry and decreasing on the other side. Uh, so here. If you look at this, as you read it from left to right, it's going down, 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 down. But then when it gets here, it goes back up, 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 up. And that's what it means by that. When identifying characteristics from a graph, it is often easiest to locate the vertex first. So the vertex. I'm going to show you how to get that vertex. Remember, that vertex is also your lowest point. Slash your minimum. That is also your highest point if it goes up. Slash your max. You to kind of be able to read it, right? Uh, when uh, it, is, it is either the maximum or minimum point of the graph, then locate the x intercepts. They are the zeros of the function. So basically what happens, this is what it's kind of telling you here. Kind of a whole bunch of stuff. Well, you know you have a low point here. I'm going to say it opens up like that, if you don't mind, okay? You know there's this axis of symmetry which this half looks exactly like that half. Do you agree? And they're saying if it crosses the x-axis, then find this point, and now you know that point. Because how far it's off here would be how far it's off here as far as from the axis of symmetry. So there's a lot of cool tricks here that you can use. So make sure you know that axis of symmetry is this line that goes up and down. The zero, remember the zero. The other four, there's three words for zeros. Okay, there's four words, but three other ones. Zeros, the root, the solution, and the most important one, I say, the x-intercept. Let's go and look at this. Let's try to answer one of these, okay? Find the vertex the, of the equation. Uh, far, sorry, find the vertex, the equation of the axis of symmetry, the y-intercept, and the zeros of each graph. Okay. This one says to do a lot. Your calculator will help you out on this one. Okay. I promise. So this one's pretty easy. Um, first off, if they give you a graph, then this right here is your y-intercept. It's where my graph crosses the y-axis. This is my vertex. It's the highest or lowest point. Axis of symmetry, the line that goes vertically up and down through your axis, sorry, through your vertex. Okay, and that's your axis of symmetry. 
have a bit. Okay. <clears throat> the wire slips found that there. Why did the wire slip? It's because where my ground crosses the y axis. There's zeros. There's only one zero right here. Now, is there always going to be a zero? I'm going to tell you this much. No. Couldn't I have my parabola opening up? And remember, my zeros are where the graphs cross the x axis. If it doesn't cross the x axis, it doesn't have a zero. And there it is. Pretty easy, right? Let's look at this one. This is my vertex. This is my axis of symmetry, which just happens to be the y axis. This is a zero. This is a zero, a root, a solution, uh, x intercept. This here is my vertex. This is also my axis of symmetry. The line going up and down. That's also my maximum. That's also my y-intercept because that's where my graph crosses the y-axis. Pretty cool, right? So let's look at this one real quick. Let's see what's going on here. Okay. Uh, copy this graph. Get down in your paper, guys. Look at it. Let me zoom in. Okay. So uh, vertex, this highest point. Okay. It's a max. I'm just saying that's a max. My y-intercept right here is where my graph crosses my x, I'm sorry, where my crosses my y-axis. This is a zero. This is a zero. There's a line that goes through it, right through the center. This here is called your axis of symmetry. Now, I can't tell you the correct answer for these things, guys, because they can show it to you like that. They can say, well, what's the coordinate? One, two, three. This one would be three, zero. You can count that. This would be a negative one, zero. The y-intercept here could be zero, one, two, three, zero, three. The axis of symmetry, guys, it's this line here. The axis of symmetry could be x is equal to one. I can't tell you if they're going to ask you to draw it, give me the coordinates, Give me the whatever. You know, there's a lot of things I can tell you. Here, look at this one real quick. My vertex for this one would be 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 4. Now, what's my domain? Let me just add some more stuff on here. My domain is all real numbers. It goes forever to the left, and it goes forever to the right. What's my range? I'm going to tell you this much. It's going to be right here. You see how it's going down? So I want less than. What, less, what y value is this? Why do we less than or equal to four? Oh, graph is below it. And that's it. Like, there's so many different things that can ask from here. Okay, they can ask you which is not your domain, which is not your range. And so you've got to be able to read it and understand it. Okay, let me try this one over here real quick. Uh, let's see, let's see. First thing, I'll go to vertex over right here. That's my vertex. Vertex. You can get the coordinate, guys. One, one, two, three, one, three. Okay. My axis of symmetry. I want to just change up the order. It goes through there. You see this number right here? So that's when x is equal to one. This is my y-intercept right here. That's when it's zero, one, two, three, four. When it's zero, four. Um, you know what? There are no zeros here. I'm going to put zeros and A. It does not cross the x-axis, so no zeros on this one. Axis of symmetry, right here, the sign that goes up and down, where x is equal to 1. Uh, y is that vertex. This is a minimum, okay, because it's opening up. This is a maximum. And you know what? We'll stop there. We'll stop there pretty good.